Today I've got a Nintendo Switch that I have already removed the damaged charge port from. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Anyways, you can see uh, some physical damage there to the pins. Pretty common on this device. Uh, the downside is that quite often what happens is these things getting crossed up on the inside because you end up shorting one circuit, one part of the circuit into another. And it can cause a lot more issues beyond just the port itself. So what I'm going to recommend if you're working on these is to come up here to where the charging IC is and start checking these capacitors because at this point I'm going to say if I had to guess probably at least 20 to 25 percent of the time you're going to be looking at more than one problem and uh, because of what I showed you inside the port. So I'm going to pull up the meter here and we'll put it in diode mode and where you want to check is uh, basically this metal shield here on the left. This is going to be ground so you can just put your red probe there and if you check all of these big caps, so there's one down here, a couple here, four right across the top, and then these two on the side, you want to make sure that none of these have anything that's ground on both sides. So you can see we've got ground here, and then we're going to have 0.5-ish. Over here we've got ground, 0.6, and so forth. And if you just go around and check these, you'll see that uh, they all should have a value on one side that's not going to ground. However, on this one, two... Oops, let's check that one again. Do we have short here? Oh, we got a short there and a short there because these, as you can see here and here, these are supposed to be ground on the top, but they are not supposed to be ground on this end. And both of those are. I thought it was just this one. We'll check this one. It says ground, and then we have a value here. So these, uh, not necessarily bad news. There's a good possibility that the problem here is in the charging IC. And then I want to say it's this cap, it's either this cap or this cap that uh, also connects to the uh, video output circuit, which I'll have to look that up to confirm it for you. But what we're going to do now is pull the charging IC off. More than likely this has been damaged because of the short inside of the charge port. This is not terribly bad news up here, any of these that are shorted, even these over here. But when you get to this one right here, if you remove the charging IC and you still have a short over here, there's a pretty... I want to say almost 100% chance uh, of probability that you've got a short under the processor, which is obviously going to be a lot more complex of a problem. So we'll go ahead and remove this and hopefully that will clear our short.
All right, I'm gonna give that a second to cool down, but let's go back to the multimeter and got my fingers crossed here. I'm gonna check these again. And let's see what we got. And we've got OL and OL. So fortunately, this is going to be just a bad charging IC. Go ahead and put one back on and we should be fine. All right, let's take a look and make sure, oh, back up here, make sure that these are connected all the way around just to be safe. It's kind of tricky to, uh, if you look, look at an angle, you can see that we've actually added a little solder on the outside of the chip to make sure that we have good connection all the way around. Check the last side here. 
And I know there's flux on there, but once we clean this off, you'll be able to see that uh, there's a joint. There's one on the left there that's not quite connected, so I'm going to go touch that up real quick. Okay, so that's what we're looking for all the way around. We should be ready to go. I'll clean this up and connect it to a battery and hopefully we're good. All right, so I went ahead and replaced the charge port and as you can see, I'm hooking up just the battery right now because we wanted to uh, determine whether or not this is taking a charge at this point, which it should be. So we'll go ahead and connect the amp meter here. I'll turn this around so you can see. And this will go through uh, Ah, basically, uh, if we've got anywhere between 0.28 and 0.47, that means that the battery is charging, but it is too low at this point to take the full amount of current, which usually is going to be around 1.7-ish. So um, I'm going to disconnect the amp meter, plug this into the charger, and uh, actually going to use the OEM charger because that should charge a bit faster. And we'll leave this here and come back when we think. Uh, it's had enough time to get up to a regular, or got enough uh, juice on the battery basically to boot up the device. Alright, we've had 15 minutes on the OEM charger, so this battery should uh, actually be charged enough to power the device on, which means if we plug in our USB-C amp meter, we should be pulling about one point something, oh, we're at 0.62, there we go. Okay, so 1.44 in that direction. Now, more importantly, if we flip it over this way, let's make sure we're still getting a good charge. Okay, so we are actually charging in both directions, no problem. The final test here is to determine whether or not we have video output, just to make sure. To confirm that, we're going to do it the easy way using one of these. So I'm going to connect this down here. Here is the catch for this device. It's got an HDMI output. However, you must use the OEM USB-C power supply. If you use some other type, uh, generic sort, it will not function properly. I'm not sure why that is, but it does require the actual um, Nintendo OEM charger. Then we will take our HDMI cable connected over here and how am I going to show you this I'll have to set up a second camera so I'll be back in just a second one two three alright so here's what we're gonna do uh, hopefully picture in picture this thing and I will connect the HDMI port Probably should have connected the charger first, that's okay. OEM charger, and we should now see our video input switch over to uh, the channel that has this particular HDMI on it, and we should get an image here in a second. Now, sometimes you have to disconnect and reconnect one of these, so hopefully that will do the trick. Let's try that again. There we go. So we've got Nintendo that way. And here's the interesting thing. Uh, as you probably know, the dock only connects one direction, but you can actually flip this around the opposite way and we will still have our video output. So just a little trick there to uh, not waste your time doing a complete reassembly until you know that you've actually got your video output and your charger working properly. And that is pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.